All right guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to be learning how to create a digital clock in C Sharp. Now, everyone knows what digital alarm clocks are. They're those annoying things that sit next to your bed and they make a loud noise at you for you to get up in the morning for work or school. But they're also useful for actually reading time because who wants to look at an analog clock and actually read the sticks? No one. So without further ado, let's just get right into the project. Now what you need to do is go ahead and open up Visual Studio. We're going to create a Windows Forms app and we're going to call it uh, digital clock. All right, guys, now that we're inside of our project, let's go ahead and adjust some basic settings here uh, right off the bat. So we're going to first expand the size of our uh, form here just to make the clock a lot larger. We're going to change the actual background here to be uh, black. And then we're going to drag a label on the screen to represent our actual uh, clock face. So with this label, we want to change a few properties on that as well. We want to set auto size to false. We want to go ahead and uh, name it. So wherever that is, the text property will say loading with a couple of dots. And then uh, wherever the name is here. So instead of label two, we're going to call it clock label. And also we're going to make the font color uh, red to start off with, because it seems like a lot of those digital clocks are, you know, a reddish color of some sort. And uh, let's go ahead and bump the font up to a like, very large size. 72 might not even be big enough. Obviously the text cannot fit in the label uh, given its current size. So go ahead and put up in the corner here until you see those little lines and then drag it and make sure it takes up the majority of the screen. Leave a little bit of room on the bottom and I'll explain later what that's for. Uh, so yeah, you want it to take up most of your form, make sure it says loading and uh, you might ask yourself why? Well, that's because um, it'll take a tiny bit of time after you launch the program from when do you, when you click go until it actually comes up with the time for it to figure out what time of day it is. So we're just gonna say loading in the meantime. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and adjust the text align property for this label. So instead of top left, click in there and we're gonna do middle, middle. So it's the exact middle of the label and you know middle of the screen. And yeah, we're gonna leave it like that. And I honestly, this font isn't even large enough. You can uh, go ahead and click back in here instead of 72, which is the largest size that actually lets you um, in terms of this dropdown list, you can type in your own size. We're gonna go with like 90 just to make sure it's very easily readable. All right, guys, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and change a couple more properties before we go into the backend code and make a little bit of changes here. So guys, what you wanna do now is go ahead and click on your form as a whole, find the text uh, field here. Instead of form one, we're gonna call it digital space clock. Oops, can't spell digital clock. There we go. And then we're going to find the name field. Instead of form one, we're going to say digital clock, but that's going to be one word instead of space. So now that we've done that, we've not only named our program, but we've also, you know, changed how it looks here. And we've, we've made it look pretty basic to start off with. So let's go ahead and double click on the form. And that's going to automatically launch this uh, window back here for the code in the back end. All right, guys, now that we have our back end code, let's go back to the form and we need to drag the critical thing onto the screen that will make this whole thing work, which is a timer. So go ahead and just drag it onto the form. You'll notice it shows up down here. We're gonna first rename it from timer one to uh, clock timer. And then we're going to change the interval to be 1000 instead of 100. That means that every thousand milliseconds, it will tick and fire this um, tick method that I'll show you here in a second. But every time it ticks, that's you know one second of real time. And then we can do stuff with that method. We've done the basic settings that we need to. Let's go ahead and click the lightning thing here and just double click inside of this tick box and that'll automatically add the method in the back end here. So now that we have this method in our back end code, we need to actually use it to update our loading symbol here, our loading label in the front. Obviously, if we didn't do anything, this loading, it would just say loading forever. But every second of time that passes or every minute, an hour, we want to actually you know, display that on this label instead of loading. And right now, for example, it's like 331 in 22 seconds. So we want to, you know, display a format similar to that in the front end here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use this, this tick method here. And it's actually pretty simple. We're gonna call our label first. So we're gonna say clock label dot text is equal to, and then we're gonna say date time dot now dot to string. And then in the string, we can actually reference, you know, what kind of format we want the string in. And that's going to be hours, minutes, and seconds. Now guys, we are showing time uh, formatted just like this, but you can you know, do just the date, or you could do you know, only hours or only minutes, whatever you want. But I feel like most clocks are set up like this, especially the digital ones. So we're gonna leave it like this. 
Now you might ask yourself, you know, Sean, why, why the heck do I need this timer tick method if I'm just going to be using, you know, some other date time, whatever library to actually display the time? Well, that's because obviously we want to update it every single second that the program is running and, uh, you know, update it with the real time. And that is what this tick method is for. And every time that this ticks, it's going to grab the actual time right now and then just display it for us. Now, one other thing that we need to do is when our form actually loads up, let's just go ahead and um, start the timer. So we're going to say clock timer dot start with the good old parentheses and semicolon. So now that this is set up, we're going to launch our program. Our timer is going to begin once the form loads. And then every second that passes by, the label is going to be updated with the real time. So if we go ahead and launch our program, it should work as expected. So you'll notice loading went away for a little bit. And now it is 334 in six seconds. And if we click our actual Windows clock, you'll notice that they match very similarly. Now we could stop there, but we won't. We're going to add a little bit of customization to this because why not? Let's practice our skills and let's make it more, you know, user friendly and customizable. So go ahead and close this program and we're going to add some things to the front end here. Remember earlier when I told you to leave a little bit of space at the bottom? This is what I was referring to and we're going to add some buttons. Now I was thinking, why don't we add a couple buttons uh, to ch change the color of the text? So maybe they don't always want to see this red text here. Uh, we can go ahead and find a button, drag it down here, and let's just make it like a little square. That way it's just enough, it's just big enough to like show a color and that's really it. We don't need any text on it. Put it in the far left corner here. And then we're gonna change some properties. So first of all, um, the text is gonna be nothing and the button is going to be uh, reflective of what color we're displaying. This first button here is going to be a red button. We want to change the color to red. You know, we're gonna have a blue button and a green button and so on. But yeah, just do that. And we're going to change the background color of the button to reflect the color that we're talking about. So red. And that's honestly all you need for that. We're going to go ahead and remove that tiny little border you see uh, in the code in a second here. But one thing you want to do once we have all these buttons made is we're going to double click on them to add the click methods in the back end code. But first, let's go ahead and make some more buttons. So I'm thinking maybe we have approximately, I don't know, five or so buttons. So keep pasting more and more buttons. And then we'll go ahead and change them once these are pasted. So now that they're pasted, let's go ahead and click on the second one. Instead of red, we're going to do, I don't know, orange. And we're going to name it orange button instead of button one. So orange button. Go to the next one. This one is going to be a yellow button. And then go ahead and change the background color here to reflect that yellow color. So yellow. Go on to the next one. We're going to do this green here. And we're going to call it green button. And actually, this is more of a lime color. Let's make it actual green. So let's find just regular green. And then finally, we're going to do this button here. And this is going to be blue. So let's go ahead and find a nice blue. That looks nice. Um, and then we're going to obviously rename the button from button number four to blue button. So guys, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and double click all of our buttons here to automatically add the click method in this back end code. You could do it this way, or you can go ahead and click on the lightning symbol and that'll do the same thing. We have our five click methods back here, which is awesome. And it's super simple what we need to do. Inside of each click function, we just need to change the text for color of the label. So our label is called clock label, if you remember. And if we go ahead and say clock label dot for color, we're gonna set that equal to color and then dot whatever color we are talking about. You could also do custom RGB values, but we're just going to do standard built in once so we're going to do color dot blue and that's literally all you need for just this blue button to work so we're going to go ahead and copy this a couple times into each click method of each button and then we're just going to change the color so it's going to be you know red and orange and then this one's going to be yellow and then this final one here is going to be green so if you go ahead and launch our program and test it, we should have working buttons that actually change the color of the text here. So let's go ahead and click blue and you'll notice now it turns blue or yellow or green. And that's awesome. It works. Now, one other thing I mentioned is that we will go ahead and remove these little borders here. I think they look a little silly. Maybe you like them. You could leave them if you want. But let's go ahead and remove these borders. All you need to do to actually remove the border is you reference the name of the button. So we're going to say red button, for example, red button. And then we're going to say dot flat style. And that is equal to flat style dot flat. And all that's saying is that we're going to change the you know styling of the button to be this flat style, which is a style that does not include that border. So all you need to do is go ahead and copy this a couple times. I think we have five total buttons and then just change the name of the button that we're talking about. So we have the blue button, we have a yellow and we have the orange one. 
and I think we have the green one as well. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and run it again, and you'll notice now our borders on our colors should be gone, which is pretty cool because now it's very, very easy to see which button is selected, and you know there isn't a border around them. So let's go ahead and just click, click around here, and you'll notice the color changes, and this is working awesome. Now, one more thing that we could do is go ahead and add a couple buttons to change the font style. So we have this digital clock here. Maybe we want to change the style of the font um, with some buttons and, you know, the user can change the color and the font and it'll just be cool. So let's go ahead and close our program and then go to the front end here. And we're going to add three total buttons to offer three different font styles. So go ahead and click button and drag it onto the screen. Make sure to line it up with the other ones. And something that we're going to do is instead of button one, we're just going to say style one for the text. And then for the actual name of the button, we're going to say uh, style button one. So right now we have the font set to sans serif for this first button, but we're going to change it up. Uh, I don't know, we could do this impact font, for example, and just make it look like that. Let's go ahead and change the background color of this button to be a white color, and then go ahead and copy it two more times and line them up with each other. And now that they're lined up, go ahead and change the font on this the second button here to be something else. We also need to change the name, so we're going to say uh, style button two. And we're going to change the font, for this impact one to be whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and change it to consolas or consolas or however you pronounce that and do that. And then this third button here, we're going to change the name of this to be style button three. And we're going to change the font from the impact once again. Uh, I don't know. We could do this Sika display font, sure. All right, guys, now that we have that knocked out of the way, why don't we add click functions for each of these buttons? So go ahead and double click on it once again for each button, and it'll automatically add the stuff in the back end. All right, guys, inside of each one of these buttons, we need to just simply change the font of the label. So we're gonna say clock label dot font is equal to, and then we're gonna create a new font object, and that's the best way to set these fonts. And we're gonna say new font and open up the parentheses here, and there's three different parameters. There's going to be first like the, the font type or its family. And then the second one's going to be the size of the font. And then the third one is going to be, you know, whether it's uh, bolded or italicized or regular. So if we go back to our front end here, we'll notice that style one, the button here is set to this impact font. So if we just go ahead and copy the font inside of this little window, go back here. And the first parameter is going to be double quotes and then the name of the font. Then the second parameter here is going to be 90 because that's the current size of the font that's on the label now. And then the third parameter is going to be uh, regular or font style dot regular. That way we you know, we don't want it bolded and we're just going to call it, you know, regular font. All right, guys, all we need to do is copy this and do it two more times and obviously just change a little bit of stuff. So let's paste it here. And instead of the second one being set to impact, it's going to be set to this console S one or console S one. So let's go ahead and copy this and go back to our back end and just change what's in the double quotes. And then for the third button that is set to this uh, Sitka display. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. Go to our um, back end, change the double quotes. And now we have three different functions to do three different things. So let's go ahead and click start and test it out. So now that we have our clock running, not only do we have this, you know, green color, but we could say style one, that'll change the font to this or style two, we'll change it to that or style three, we'll change it to this. So that's awesome. So we're almost done, but we do need to make a few more changes for things to work. So instead of style one on each one of these buttons, we're gonna just say, you know, style two and then style three for this third one here. So there you guys have it. You have a working and customizable digital alarm clock. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.